Today we have a special video, folks, and the reason is, is because I am selling some Magic the Gathering cards instead of buying some Magic the Gathering cards. I'm going to talk about what I'm selling, why I'm selling it, but we have a special treat today. And the reason is, is because our sponsor, Card Conduit, we're going to be using that website and that resource to sell my singles. We're going to buy list these out, and I'm going to take the entire process from start to finish so you can see what I'm selling and why. Then we're actually gonna send it out to Card Conduit. I'm gonna estimate what I think I'm gonna get back from them. And then we're gonna compare it to their report when they actually pay me. So we're gonna have the entire process in this video. I'm gonna take a break. What a time to be alive. Big thank you to our patrons for the continued support here at Jake and Jeweler Magic. You all look especially attractive today. I really like that shirt you're wearing. Hey you, why aren't you wearing a shirt? Well, that's fine. It's your own house. So we are over here at cardconduit.com. This is the website that you'll use. That's C-A-R-D-C-O-N-D-U-I-T.com. I'm going to walk you through the order, but first I want to talk to you about the cards that I'm selling, why I'm selling those, because this is a what I'm selling. I kind of want to talk about my bearishness on MTG singles in a way and why I'm just getting rid of a bunch of extra cards. It might seem obvious to some of you. You're going to be like, I wonder if he's just selling cards he doesn't need to make money. Yeah, that could be the TLDR of it if you want to think about it, but I'm going to dig in a little bit more, talk about why I'm getting rid of some of this specific stuff, and then we're going to come back here and we're going to go through the entire process of sending these cards out in case you're interested in sending some cards out yourself. Maybe you're just like, yeah, I've been wanting to buy list cards, or you're like, I just don't have time to sit and eBay each order. And if you value your time, Card Conduit is awesome because you're able to just send out the cards, they take care of all the work, and they pay you. Yes, it's going to be less than if you were to nickel and dime every single card and do all of the work yourself, but time is worth money as well. So let's go ahead and get on into these cards. One thing you're going to notice when you go to put your order together, they're going to give you a very specific order to put the cards in. I've already put these cards in order, and it's by set. So that's how that works is pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cards and then we're going to go over and sell them. And I've stopped doing this the last couple years, but I used to spec MTG singles. And the whole idea was if I buy cards at a cheap price, then at some point, let's move the camera a little bit. Then at some point, I'm going to sell those cards for gains. Well, uh, some of these are worth something. And some of them are worth a lot less than what I paid. The first ones we have are Sacred Cat. I remember picking these up because people love cats. And these, I believe, are buy listing for around six or seven bucks. So very nice, uh, nice win on those. Got Sanctum of Eternity. I figured this card was going to pan out. It has a pretty fun effect. But the thing is, is it's just not like a very expensive effect. It's something that you can do but you don't have to do it all the time. So I was like, yeah, we'll just get rid of these extras. I kept one of each of these. If I didn't have a copy of them, I was like, well, I'll keep a copy of anything. A uh, Thousand Year Storm got reprinted. And so missed the boat on these. These were definitely worth more than what I'm selling them for. I think I'm getting like a couple dollars a card on these. But with all the reprints, uh, I should have been out on these ages ago when I bought them, which uh, this set was... 2018 so yeah should have got out ahead of that which is oven one of my very favorite cards these are all foils here which is oven is just a great card and the thing is is it, it was worth more than what i'm selling it for i think i'm getting like a dollar 60 a card on this but with witches oven i just know that as soon as it gets a reprint at uncommon in whatever collector product it's just going to shoot the price down to a quarter. So I would rather make at least a couple bucks on these. Uh, Maskwood Nexus. This is a fun spec. This is one that I picked up a lot of copies of when Call Time came out. And this is kind of like the same thing. I don't want it to get jammed in a commander deck um, and then reprinted into Oblivion. And then all of these that are worth about $3.50 now end up going to... Um, you know, a dollar or less. Makes sense to just go ahead and get out of these. Great card, though. Creatures you control are every creature type. Same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. And then it's also a token generator. Pretty sweet card. Pretty obvious card, in my opinion. In the age of variants, when you have people that are just... Oh, man, they're just like, yeah, dude, we're just gonna... It could end up in a secret lair. So any of this kind of stuff that I have superfluous copies of... 
I, I have a foil world wake version of arbor elf so i was like all right these ones are sexy but we're gonna go ahead and get rid of them don't need them scheming symmetry great card i have like three other copies of this i don't need these extra copies but fantastic card if i didn't have copies of these already there's no way i'd be selling these just a great card praetor's grasp same thing same exact thing and then you're gonna see a bunch of oath of nissa oath of nissa is a card where it's like man i i diamond hands through a bunch of gains which means these went to like seven or eight a piece when they were getting played heavily in pioneer and i just didn't sell them it just wasn't on my radar and my cost basis for these was i paid like maybe like i, I remember paying as low as like 59 cents for some of these 79 cents for some of these and then when i was like really buying a lot of them uh which i guess we could just go over here into this one when I was buying a lot of copies of Oath of Nyssa, toward the end, I was averaging up because I was like, you know, I've already bought a bunch of these at like 59 cents or less. I'll go ahead and buy some at like a dollar or more, two dollars. And so you could just see all of the oaths. So these right now are worth just over a dollar. And it's the same kind of thing. I don't want Oath of Nyssa to be one of these cards that gets reprinted. And now all of a sudden, these cards that are worth a dollar, even though I held through sevens and eights like an absolute freaking idiot, especially, and I, I can call myself an idiot with love in this instance, because it's like, Jake, you bought these. I, I, I don't need these for decks. Why do I have these? What is the point of these? Uh, the point was to make money. When I had a 8x or like a 7 or 8x on whatever you want to call this, this investment, this MTG finance endeavor, I missed the boat. They went to, you know, uh, an area where it would have been a nice, tidy little profit. But instead, I just was like, yeah, where are my Oath of Nessas? I don't know. I'll just make a YouTube video, whatever. Who knows? A couple Spire of Industry. This was a card that when it first came out, when it was first spoiled, I was like, dude, Spire, dude, this is a great card. These, I used to have this terrible habit of when new sets came out, I would just buy, 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 buy during that pre-sale window or not the pre-sale window but like that that like pre-release hype window the week before the set comes out and the market just gets flooded with this kind of stuff thankfully these still have a little bit of value i think i'm getting like seven or eight a card on this and it's sweet it's a great card pay one life add one mana of any color to your mana pool activate this ability only if you control an artifact city of brass for artifact with artifact synergy but this has been printed in a commander deck the regular version of this card and i have a ton of copies of the regular version of this card there's just so many effects like this that cards like this they're great they're helpful but they're not a necessity to the point where they're going to have a big value now somebody that does like artifacts that's why these foils right here these pre-release foils have any sort of value at all is that certain decks that want that pimp factor will pay for the foil which is why i'm sending these out and then we got some other stuff here pack rat these were bought during the announcement of pioneer i remember i went hard and i bought some singles when pioneer was first announced pack rat came to mind right out the gate i was like well that was a card that was a dominating force in standard and it's a card that is you know really powerful and playable even in commander and so i was like that card will have some sort of impact on pioneer I don't, I don't know if it really did. I don't think it did, but thankfully the card still has value because of the other formats that I mentioned. Afara, uh, these were all bought when I was buying the, we'll just talk about that, the Theros Stargazing Volume 2, which was the one based around Thassa, God of the Sea. I bought a bunch of these trying to chase the Stained Glass Narset, and it's funny, I didn't pull the Stained Glass Narset. I had to buy it <laughs> outright. I did pull a few Teferis, I pulled a Jace, and some other fun stuff. But these cards, thankfully because of the secret layer, and people like the pimp factor of cards these days, these cards actually have some value. So I'm sending out these Afaras at around 3 apiece, these crew fixes at around 6 apiece, and then these Thassas at around, I believe, like 8 to 10 apiece. Tidying up getting rid of some stuff that I don't need. I kept two or three of those each. Then Cure Best of Sea God. This was a card that was actually spec of mine as well, and I'm happy that this card turned out well. Uh, Cure Best of Sea God, big, splashy blue enchantment. 
I always complain about sagas because sagas just offer so much value. After you make that initial seven cost investment for this card, yeah, you get your 8-8, eight, eight, but then the next turn for nothing, you tap all non-land permanents, target opponent controls. They don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Just sleep your entire board. Why not? You've already paid the seven cost. You already got your 8-8 eight, eight token with hexproof. Then you get this effect, but then gain control of target permanent and opponent controls. Untap it. Just straight up. Yeah, I bought these at, a, I believe, about a dollar a card, and I am happy that I did. These are getting sold off at, I think, like sixes or sevens. Great card. And then I did the same thing with some foils. I kept a foil for myself, of course, but I am getting rid of three of the foils. That's a spec that ended up working out. And then Thassa Deep Dwelling. I'm just getting rid of a bunch of these. These also are uh, different versions. You have the base copy from the set. You have the showcase non-foil and then three of the showcase foils. Definitely took a loss on these. I think I bought these at like 20s and I'm selling these back for eights. I bought these ages ago on a different giant big website. Yeah, just took a loss. It's variant era though. You know, when you look at stuff like this, it's like, yeah, it looks cool, it's great, but this is in the infancy of the era we know now, right? Which is, everything has variants. This is cool, this is awesome. But quite frankly, no one cares. I mean, I guess, you know, it's on a buy list. So if someone cares enough, I'm able to sell it, which is sweet. And then this is an old spec as well, all the way back from Ixalan. I remember picking these up for, it, it would have been under two. So it was between a dollar, or it might have even been 99 cents a card. But I remember being like, wow, that's a good effect. Pretty sweet. You just get treasure when stuff dies. If they don't answer it, eventually you win. If there's enough board wipes, right? But... We had no idea how oppressive treasure would be and how good treasure would become. So nice little payoff here on some of these. It's easy with a video like this to be like, wow, Jake, you specced some cards. Uh, well, there's a ton of cards that didn't make it into this video that I also specced that uh, did not pay off. And I'm sure some of you have seen them on Reddit. I post uh, some pretty good losses over there sometimes. Those are the cards I'm getting rid of. I've separated them based on what card conduit wants out of the shipment. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to do like a one of two and a two of two, because this is a pretty basic shipment, pretty straightforward, right? I just got two cases with cards in them and these are going to be sent over. It's very easy. But if I had a big order, I do one of four, two of four, three of four, four of four and so on, whatever make it simple for them. I'm going to show you everything that I'm going to use to ship this stuff off so that you're like, well, what do I ship it in? Well, you see this right now, but I'm going to talk about some of the other stuff too. Now that you know what I'm selling and why we're back over here on Card Conduit, where we're actually going to sell the cards. So I'm already logged in here, but if I was not logged in, I would go up here and I would log in. You could ship unsorted magic cards. You could do what I did and you can sort them. There's different rates. Before you do anything, before you send anything out, I would recommend that the cards that you're selling come over here and use the card price check. Both of Nissa, you can see the near mint price. They're able to show you exactly what it is. What else is cool? There's the retail price right here. So you could see over on TCG what the low price for the card is. Sure. Is it going to be worth it for you to someone like me who I think I have 40 copies of Oath of Nissa in here, which is the max. Is it worth it for me to make individual listings just so that I can net about 50 cents a card. No, not really. I would rather just send all of these out, make money back on them, keep the process simple, have Card Conduit do it for me. Some of you might be like, no, I like to nickel and dime my cards. Well, then this, this service might not be for you. It might not be for you. For me, it's excellent. You could come over here, say I did have some copies of Mox Amber, for example. And so I was like, okay, you know, I have these copies of Mox Amber. I could get 1671 here, save some time. But because it's just a play set of Mox Amber, I was like, well, you know, I could put in a little bit of extra effort, sell off a play set, and possibly get 80 bucks for the play set. Is it worth it for that that $6 per card? In this instance, yeah, sure. I think it's easy to sell off a play set of Mox Amber. I could take a small eBay fee. There's also convenience. You could just bundle it all in here, sell off some cards at around this range as well. Stuff that's very expensive. Like, for example, I have a Cradle. I just looked this up earlier, but I was like, you know, here's the near mint price for Cradle. And I was like, okay, if I'm selling a high-end piece like this, 
I'm probably going to just do that myself, right? Whether I use a Facebook group, sell it to somebody in Discord, but for people that don't have that resource, you can still compare here. That way, when you go through and you're like, I'm going to sell my guy's cradle and they give you this price for it, you are bamboozled because you should have been using the card price check tool, which I'm showing you right now. So all of the stuff that I was interested in selling, I did all of this pre-work ahead of time. I made sure that when I went through and actually started a shipment that I had already checked the cards. I knew that I would be getting X amount of value for them, roughly. Make sure you use this. Very important before you use the service. Now, when you're ready to actually sell something, this is the dashboard. Now I could show you, I already have a shipment ready to go here, but for the sake of this video, let's go ahead and register a new shipment. That way you can see what this process is gonna be like. You can see how it works, very simple. You register the shipment, you ship your cards, they catalog the cards and sell them wholesale to buyers. And you get a detailed report of the results. This is pretty sweet. Shout out to Jank, by the way, longtime moderator of Jake and Joel are Magic, one of my buddies. He's used Card Conduit, and I was picking his brain before I was sending out my order. And I was like, yeah, dude, this sounds great. He's a big fan as well. And thank you to him for taking the time to kind of like walk me through doing my first shipment. And then after they send the detailed reports, you get a payment sent to you. Now there's a shipping guide here. The TLDR of the shipping guide is uh, pretty much comes down to don't be an idiot. Don't put a bunch of heavy stuff in a cheapo cardboard box. There's different ratings for cardboard boxes. I'm gonna tell you what I would specifically do is I would use priority mail boxes based on how many cards I'm shipping. I would either use the small, medium, or large flat rate boxes. Those boxes are typically pretty good. If you're sending a ton of stuff, make sure you go to like a box city or somewhere where you can get a box that is rated to hold a lot of heavy stuff. If you're not going to break this up into different boxes, if you're trying to send it all in like one big giant, you know, like moving box that's not filled with like pillows and stuffed animals and maybe a couple heavy things, but instead hundreds of pounds of magic cards, it might arrive damaged. There's a great shipping guide here. It tells you everything that you need to do. Before I ship my stuff, I'm gonna tell you everything that I'm gonna use, but they give you a lot of great recommended stuff. If you're not used to shipping cards, I'm very used to it. So for me, it's like, oh, okay, there's some helpful reminders here, but there's not anything where I'm like, oh yeah, that's not something that I haven't already thought of. Let's go ahead and register a new shipment. That way you can see how this works. Standard shipment, my name, how about Jakey Joe? Standard shipment, send us any number of unsorted cards for processing at our standard rates. And you can see the fees here. It's three cents per card plus 10% assessed value. This is, for example, I just showed you all the cards that I was sending out. For the stuff that is worth something, meaning it isn't bulk, but it's less than a dollar. Something that comes to mind is I had a stack of 20 rotting Regisaur that is just under a dollar. This is going to be the sort the service that you're going to want to use is this standard shipment. You can send all of those cards that aren't bulk but are worth a little bit of something using the standard shipment. There's going to be a 3 cent per card fee plus 10% of whatever the value is that you're getting for those cards. We are going to be using the sorted shipment because we're sending a small amount of cards. They're all worth a dollar or more. Curated would be I have a ton of cards. I know that they're all worth over a dollar, but I just don't have time to sort them and you would go with the curated shipment. But if you have a few cards or a lot of time, you could do the sorted shipment and itemize each card worth a dollar plus on the buy list for processing at our lowest fees. Choose cards with our selection tool and then sort them according to the list we provide. It's very simple. Zero dollar fee per card plus a 2% assessed value. What does that mean? If the cards are worth $100, they're gonna keep two bucks and they're going to send you $98 because you're doing a lot of the work. You're sorting, you're doing the pre-work. All they have to do is take your cards, look at them, do a couple checks, be like, okay, these, they sent us what they said they'd send us. There is no like, okay, we need to go in and sort these and see what, what is worth. They already have a report on their end that they're able to compare what you send to them. So because they're doing less work, they are taking less fees and you are getting paid more. The standard shipment, this is this is pretty cool because I had some cards for my sorted shipment where I was like, I had a bunch of rotting Regisaur and some other cards that came out under a dollar. I took those cards all the way to the process of getting them ready to pack up and their sorting tool actually makes sure that it doesn't even come up. 
Like if I type in rotting Regisaur, let's go into our sorted shipment. And then we'll just do di uh, direct deposit. That's what I'm probably going to use. But you could see that there's check, there's Zelle, there's PayPal. Also, if you're outside of the US, do not worry. There's international shipping. You can learn all about it. It's great. And then you go here to proceed. Here's our shipment ready to go. There's a promo code that you should absolutely use if you decide to use this. And the promo code is JUDGEAM. That's Jake and Joel, our magic, baby. And you will get, when you hit apply, a 10% discount. Not bad, right? I hope you like discounts. You go here, you click through all of this, make sure they, they don't like card sleeves, so don't send with card sleeves. Important. And then non-English cards, unless it's specific stuff like they note here, like Mystical Archive, they also don't want that. So you understand, I understand, I understand. And then you go to proceed. So we want to make sure that we sort this. So what this means is we're going to select our cards. And in this selection tool, like I was mentioning, Rotting Ridgesaur, you can see the promo comes up. You can see we have the regular foil comes up. You, you have the promo pack version that has the little Planeswalker symbol here. It also comes up. There's the promo pack foil and then there's the, the regular one. But then there is no other one. So when you check that using the price check tool, riding register comes up at like 90 cents or 80 or 90 cents. It doesn't hit that tier for this special sorted service. Okay, so then take that card if you still want to sell it and send it in the regular standard service later on. Not in this shipment, set that to the side. But you can go through here, you check everything. We got our Oath of Nyssa. There it is at a dollar and three cents, but you can actually go here and click the plus. It's not just four copies that you can send. You can scroll all the way down and you can see the maximum is 40. So I sent 40 Oath of Nyssa. And then what's nice is they just add them over here. They just add the items. So it's as simple as that. We go through, let's just say this is it. This is it. We're finished adding the cards. Actually, here, we'll do this just so I can show you. Say we have uh, 10 Witches Oven. We got Sacred Cat. We got six of those. Once you've got your cards in and you're you're done, and this list could be much longer, you would hit finish. Finish adding cards. Your selected cards, 56 cards, currently $89 worth of value. And then we proceed to the sorting step. Pretty simple. All right. So we've got sort our cards, view the ordered list, which they are super nice. They give you a whole list. That way you know what order they need to go in. You can print this for your records, all that stuff as well. But we're not going to proceed to shipping, but we will go do that on my actual order. So let's go back to the dashboard up here. And then we will go to my actual shipment. So I just checked. I made sure, made sure everything is in order. And then you make sure that you notice that prices are subject to change. The prices we will assess for your cards are not set until we actively are processing the cards. Prices we display prior to processing are subject to change and will also depend on the condition of the card. So for example, the $465 worth of cards right here, that is assuming that all of these come back near mint. I know that some of these Oath of Nyssa are gonna be less than near mint. So I expect this number here to fluctuate a little bit. Uh, we understand and agree. And then we are able to offer low fees for our sorted service because you're doing some of the work. I already explained this. We're doing some of the work in advance. Please be sure to sort the cards as ordered. That's what we just did, checking the list. You can even see they give you a, a an extra link here so that you can click again and make sure. If you prefer not to sort your cards, you can always switch to the curated service, which means instead of a 2% fee, it's gonna be a 5% fee, but you can rest assured if you made some mistakes, it's not going to be that big a deal. Or if you didn't have time to sort, it's not that big a deal. So we understand and agree. And then we are going to go ahead and proceed to shipping about card condition and expected value. And then they give you this here as well. Grading notice card condition will be assessed by our team and is based on certain criteria from our vendor partners, which may vary by vendor. Common criteria may include scratching, clouding, indentations, and edge corner wear. I typically barely ever use any of my specs. So all of this stuff is going to come back pretty fresh, but just know all of this. It, it could change. If everything comes back heavily played, instead of $460, I'm going to be getting around 200. These values are provided to give you an idea of the impact that grading could have. So card conduit ahead of the curve here, they're like, here, check this out. This is what it could end up being. Then we click, okay, understood. 
Only you can prevent shipping damage. We would hate for your cards to be damaged in transit. Please be sure to take the extra steps. So they give you the shipping guide again. They have a gallery of horrors here where you can go and look at some of the the terrible shipping jobs that some people have done. Yeah, these are just boxes that are overfilled, inadequate amounts of tape. The TLDR of all of this is the tape was not good. One of these boxes was really crappy, but the tape, the tape sucked. They needed more tape. 142 cards selected. Check our shipment over here. All of this looks good. And then uh, we're going to click got it. And then they give you the whole thing. Shipment ID should appear clearly on package to avoid delays. So we're just going to put the shipment ID on our package. And then we're going to ship here. That's it. For this part, all we're going to need is our cards that we're shipping out. I'm going to use this bubble. Small priority, flat rate box. This is at every single USPS and it is free. You can walk in there and take it. Because when you bring it back, you can only use this box to ship in this one service. It's provided for you. I'm also gonna use packing peanuts to make sure that there's not a lot of cards getting jostled around during shipping. All we need is our packing tape. You can already see I have painter's tape on here. I like painter's tape for shipping MTG anything pretty much uh, because if it's regular scotch tape, that scotch tape is going to have a residue, right? So I like painter's tape. Painter's tape is great. So as I ship these out, I'm actually going to put one of two and two of two on them. As I mentioned, then you can kind of see how I put those in there. And then I'm simply going to put some packing peanuts on the side and on the other side and a couple up top. You would be surprised how many people don't know how to ship cards so even though this seems completely obvious there's some people that are going to find it useful i'm also going to take my shipment id number and i'm going to put that in with one of my uh packages so that as soon as they open it that's one of the first things they see like they noted that is going to help get this process done as soon as possible now that everything is packed in there and looks secure i'm going to go ahead and seal this up priority mail small flat rate boxes are typically pretty good but i still like to use a good bit of tape around the edges you would want to go tape here Tape down here and tape here just across your edges. Make sure that it's secure so that if it does get bumped up a little bit or bumped around, it's not going to get destroyed. You don't want your box falling apart. All right. Now that I got everything packed up, I'm going to go ahead and address this. And then we're going to upload our tracking once we get done. You can see back over here that you'll upload your tracking, your, uh, your tracking number here. And then you can put comments here if you have special instructions or you want them to know something. We will refer you to complete a form with the details we need to complete the payment after you've confirmed your items are on the way. We need to upload our tracking, make sure that we mark it as shipped. We're not going to do that yet because it's currently still in hand. So once I actually ship this out, then I'm going to go ahead and mark as shipped currently November 28th. The next part of this video will be once Card Conduit actually pays me for the cards. And we're going to compare that price. We are currently expecting around $465 if everything comes back near mint. But we do know I, I'm expecting probably around 400 bucks. So we'll see how everything comes out and how much cash we get for these singles. All right, so a little bit of an update. And we are in Los Angeles, California. We shipped to Salt Lake City on the 28th eighth is when I shipped the cards to card conduit and it is now the first and they have been delivered we still need to confirm the package was delivered properly to our address packages are usually picked up a couple times a week it may be two to three days before it arrives at our sorting facility and is queued for processing so here we go little update that was very quick for me but it is west coast to west coast so I would expect this to be a little bit different depending on where you are, obviously. But we'll update when we get another notification. All right, so we have an update today. This is from Card Conduit. The order has been processed. I have been sent a delivery report, which is pretty sweet. This entire process started on like the 28th or the 29th. As of right now, as of this email, it is December 8th. So it has been just about 10 days. We were expecting $465. Card Conduit came back with $418.37. So what we can do is they have sent me a report. What it looks like right here is based on proceeds, we will issue payment of $410.84. That is minus their fees. 
we will notify you when they've processed payment. And then you can see down here, it has a 48 hour hold. I don't know what this was that I put on here, but I guess this was something that maybe I missed, but there's a 48 hour hold per your request. Processing for your shipment has not been automatically finalized. We put your shipment on a 48 hour hold so you get an opportunity to review the results, which is pretty sweet. We And we are gonna review the results. Like I said, we were expecting about $465. What's coming back is 418.37. Our final payout is gonna be 410.84. This is fine for me. So the grading came off on a little bit of the cards, a, a little bit more than expected, but let's go ahead and take a look at the report. And you can find that report right down here. You click this. And we are able to go ahead and take a look at our stuff. Remember, promo code JAJAM if you do decide to use Card Conduit. But we get to go in and we get to look at this. So pretty sweet. Uh, sorted service process December 8th. And we see all of our cards as expected. All of the sacred cats came back lightly played. So I thought maybe near mint on these, but you know, that's fine. One of them came back MP. Uh, Sanctum's... So it looks like the non-foil stuff all came back near mint as expected. All these witches ovens came back lightly played, or four of them did. And then, oh no, there's a good chunk that came back near mint. This is a pretty sweet report. We can just kind of look through here. You can see all the Maskwood Nexuses came in, Thousand Year Storms all came in near mint. The two foil Arbor Elves came in lightly played. Any sort of clouding on a foil, any tiny, any tiny little bit like that is going to keep it off a near mint. Even if the corners are perfect, even if there's like no edge wear, centering can look good. All the Oath of Nissas looks like lightly played. One MP, some more MP, one near mint, another near mint. So some came back near mint. Page two. And we do have... Yep, Spires of Industry came back, lightly played. Those were the date stamp ones. Oh, this is good. All of the secret layer stuff came back near mint. All of that looks really good. Revel and Riches, four came back near mint, two came back lightly played. The difference on that is like 40 cents. On the Oath of Nissas, because they send in such quantity, I really have no issue with this because it's a difference of like 94 cents for a lightly played, 91 cents for a moderately played. You have 95 cents here for a lightly played, 95 cents here for a near mint. So there's like no reason to even contest any of that. I mean, this all looks great to me. This is fine. This is going to be $410 for a bunch of cards that I don't even use. The other thing that's kind of cool is if we go back, we can look at the stats and highlights, which is neat. We can take a look at the stats of our report. And you have most valuable cards. Most valuable artifacts, most valuable spells. Most cards by artist. Well, yeah, there's going to be a lot of Wesley Burt cards, right? Because they sent in 40 Oath of Nissas. Really cool that they do this. This doesn't really have any sort of like bearing on the order, but it's fun to take a look at this and it's neat that they go the extra mile. Condition, we had 83 come back near mint, 54 LP, 5 MP, 0 HP, 0 damaged. And then it looks like you can make it public if you want. So that's pretty much it. This is using Card Conduit. It has been a painless process. They have done the bulk of the work. All I did was put stuff in a box, make sure it was packed up nicely, send it to them, sorted. They've done all of this work and then... It looks like in a couple days they're going to process the order. If you do decide to use Card Conduit, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. It gives you an idea of how the service is going to work. We really do appreciate Card Conduit as a sponsor. This is a great resource. We already have patrons that are using it. I have used it. I plan on using it again. This has been really fun. And get a little extra money for all those cards that you aren't using. What's wrong with that? I appreciate you so much for spending your time with us. And until next time, this has been a What I'm Selling. Big thanks to our sponsor, Card Conduit. We appreciate you and we will see you again in the future. I don't know why I'm doing all this weird stuff with my eyes. Who knows? Goodbye.